In 2016, I made a video about fiber optic broadband in the UK. I now feel I can make a much shorter and clearer video. So you have probably seen ads like this promoting so-called super fast fiber broadband. BT Infinity lets you do more on fiber optic broadband. Four times faster than the UK average. Infinity, only from BT. Get the UK's lowest standard price fiber for £10 a month. Sky. The best entertainment deserves awesome Wi-Fi. This is Virgin Fiber. What you may not know is that most of this broadband isn't truly fiber optic. To understand why, I will have to explain how broadband works. You get two types of broadband in the UK. First provided over copper landlines by BT and also resold by ISPs such as Sky and TalkTalk Talk using the open reach network. The other type of broadband is offered by Virgin Media using its cable TV network. Landline broadband works by electronically splitting the copper phone line into two channels, one for voice calls and the other for broadband, which is why you have that little filter on your phone line. This is known as Digital Subscriber Line, or DSL. The type of DSL used in the UK for basic broadband is called ADSL or Asymmetric DSL. This means that the download speed is faster than the upload speed. You can get up to 24 megabits per second download and about 1 megabit per second upload. So your landline goes from your house, either above or below ground, to a street cabinet to join a larger cable which goes to a telephone exchange. This cable is connected to a device called a DSLAM, which gives you the broadband service. The DSLAM is connected to the rest of the network with fiber. Virgin Media's broadband uses a technology called DOCSIS, which uses the empty electrical space not used by TV channels to provide broadband over its coaxial copper cable TV network. Cable TV is designed more for one-way communication, so the upload speed is pretty low. So let's talk about fiber. Fiber uses thin strands of glass to transmit data as pulses of light. Fiber use started around the 19, early 1980s and every form of modern communication that you use on a daily basis from making a phone call to sending a tweet uses fiber somewhere along the line. In fact, over 95% of all the world's telecommunications traffic is sent via undersea fiber optic cables, not satellites as most people assume. The reason why fiber is so popular is because it allows us to send almost infinite amounts of data over extremely long distances, it doesn't corrode and is immune to electrical interference. When people wanted faster broadband, telecoms companies came up with two different approaches, FTTC, fiber to the cabinet and FTTH, fiber to the home. Fiber to the cabinet works by effectively shortening the length of the existing copper wiring going into your home which is done by bringing the fiber to a new street cabinet which is placed close to the existing one. For landline broadband, there's a DSLAM inside this new cabinet, which uses VDSL to offer speeds of up to 100 megabits per second download and 20 megabits per second upload. Virgin Media does the same thing by placing its electronic equipment in a roadside cabinet. The problem with FTTC is that you're using copper wiring that was meant for this. Voice like an angel. You get oh. more from a birthday oh. greeting made by phone. Oh. British Telecom. It's you we answer to. These lines were installed years ago and were not designed for digital communication. Both ADSL and VDSL have distance limitations. ADSL can only work on lines that are less than 5 kilometers long. VDSL has an even shorter reach of about 1 kilometer. So if you're about 500 meters from the cabinet, you'll only get about half the advertised speed. DOCSIS doesn't have the same distance limitations as VDSL, but the network is shared, so you might not get the advertised speed, especially during peak times. And finally, we get fiber to the home, FTTH for short, which for some reason is called fiber to the premises in the UK, but I will use the term FTTH because that's the one used internationally. Fiber to the home bypasses the old copper networks completely, giving you end-to-end -end fiber connectivity. 
One of the criticisms of FTTH is that it's expensive, but it's not the fibers that cost the most money. Up to 80% of the cost comes from civil works, the digging and trenching getting the fiber into the ground. Now fiber to the home is the best technology that we have available to deliver broadband. FTTH works over longer distances than VDSL with a range of about 20 kilometers. Fiber to the home also has almost unlimited capacity for upgrades as you're only limited by the electronics on either side. It's also immune to electrical interference. One of Fiber to the Home's biggest advantages is that it offers a much higher upload speed than most copper-based alternatives, which is really important today if you upload stuff to the cloud. Fiber to the Home is capable of delivering both download and upload speeds of up to 1 gigabit per second. There are providers in the UK that do offer FTTH, such as GigaClear and community-based projects such as Broadband for the Rural North. So why then do companies call their broadband service fiber optic? In 2008, Virgin Media started running ads describing its broadband service as fiber optic. Consumers laid complaints with the Advertising Standards Authority, but the ASA ruled that the ads were not misleading because the copper cable only made up a small part of the connection. Now using that logic, you could describe almost anything as fiber optic. You could call the 4G on your mobile fiber optic because most base stations are connected with fiber. No other country in the world that I know of has ads that describe VDSL or DOCSIS as fiber optic. If you look at broadband websites in South Africa, Singapore, Australia and New Zealand, you'll see there's a clear distinction between the fiber broadband and the copper-based broadband. Singapore even offers its residents speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second on its fiber to the home network. Now you may well say, I don't really care as long as I get the best speeds at the best price. Well, let me use an analogy that's quite appropriate for Britain. The experts say the discovery of horse meat masquerading as beef in some Findus lasagnas poses no immediate human health risk. I think it's disgusting because if I'm going into a supermarket and I'm thinking that I'm buying beef and really I'm buying horse meat, it's it's not on really. So calling VDSL or DOCSIS fiber optic is a bit like calling a lasagna with 20% horse meat in it beef lasagna and arguing it doesn't matter as long as it tastes good. The sad thing is that the UK could have had a countrywide fiber to the home network years ago. In the 1980s, BT's chief technology officer, Peter Cochran, had started a fiber roller, managing to get the fiber cheaper than with copper. But this was stopped in the early 90s by Margaret Thatcher because she felt that FTTH gave BT an unfair advantage and so the roll-up was stopped. However, Korea and Japan continued with their respective fiber rollouts, which is why they have such good broadband speeds because fiber to the home comes pretty much standard. Now this situation isn't hopeless. Companies will offer more fiber to the home if you take a more active role and demand it because that's exactly what happened in South Africa. A lot of people said that fiber was too expensive so community associations started asking companies to roll out fiber to the home. Since then there's been an explosion of companies offering fiber and this has all happened within the last four years. Nobody had this sort of connectivity and the same thing can happen in the UK.